What's up, Virtual Squatters? I'm here with TJ Spu, as you guys know. Just letting you guys know that we've been speaking about this for months, I think, Spuda, about how Nyazuti is squatty, like we hustlers corner, but sooner rather than later, we need to um, migrate to the Virtual Nkuku platform fully. And again, I'm very thankful to Spu for giving me the opportunity to be the person that presents this show. We're obviously going to be growing the new Virtual Nkuku channel. It's still very small, but we're very uh, thankful of our little baby. And we're hoping that it will, it will grow and become as big as the Hustlers Corner. So for everyone that is new, for everyone that you know, please bring them onto the Virtual Nkuku platform. Please subscribe. Please click on the notification bell and help us grow this little baby of ours so that we can have two giants that change the landscape in South Africa. Of course, I'm never alone on this platform. Welcome to the Virtual Nkuku. Mr. Penuel, the Black yeah. Pen, how are you doing? No, I'm good. How are you? I uh, know I'm good, man. How was the weekend? No, weekend was good, man. Um, I think it's important for the squatters to also know a lot of them. Not, not really for them to know. Maybe let's say for the new audience to know. A lot of our virtual squatters love watching just me and you interact and engage. And I think it's important that we keep that culture going where we educate and we chat. Of course, we're going to keep bringing guests and the like. But outside of the guests, you guys will always have me and Usbuda breaking bread, sharing a more fire, and just having very important conversations, especially about what's topical in our country and the world at large. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've also been seeing that a lot. Uh, people saying we, we love it when you guys have guests. Yeah. It's always incredible. But um, some of us just appreciate just the two of you. Of course. When you guys just interact and you keep us updated on what's going on or what's on your mind or things for us to learn. Sure. I just wanted to give you props on the episode with um, Sis Mandi Samashikh. Thank you. That you guys posted last week, Thursday. Yes, it's, it's going to take a while. I'm obviously not happy with the views, but that's what happens when you have a baby. That's, that's still, still crawling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to try and pump that. I'm going to try and pump some of the other educational content that we have. And with the help of the squatters, maybe Sotela Nama, Nama Hustlers, Wutatukus Pusha, and then we can grow the channel and turn it into the truly educational platform that it's supposed to be. Yeah, because all along since uh, earlier this year, we did say on the Hustlers Corner platform, we'll build this virtual Mkuku and we'll move to be here full time, starting from the Monday of 2023. Uh, virtual Mkuku content will no longer be on the Hustlers Corner. That's what we've been saying. Uh, we're still there. We're still building. We're still a, a baby. But just so you guys know, Guti, uh, what's happening, guys? Are you, is this platform? I know there's a lot of new guys, but that's what Penuel is trying to explain, yeah. Guti. We've basically been building the virtual Mkuku show on a Monday on the Hustlers Corner platform, platform to become its own podcast. That's where we are now. That's why we are here on the virtual Mkuku platform. And we will be here every Monday. And Thursday, I will not be here, but uh, it'll either be the Black Pan by himself or it'll either be the Black Pan with um, his other guests. Yeah, but no. we're doing strictly educational mm -hmm. content, right? No, thank you. And look, it's going to be confusing, understandably. I'll, I'll keep reminding people until they finally get it. We'll start seeing it in the comments where some people start saying, I win Zagala and Manja, but I want no Antwana. This is what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, to all the hustlers as well, guys, please keep growing the Hustlers Corner podcast. Please join as members. It's our daddy, it's our daddy <laughs> podcast that has given birth to this baby. So let's keep daddy going and let's grow the baby as well. How was your weekend? Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great one. And as these podcasts are growing, guys, you know, we are entrepreneurs. Now, we, we are sort of pioneering in this new space. And we're also finding out different ways on how to, you know, understand this internet hustle. So as, as we are growing the Hustlers Corner, we must be growing. Penuel has got his own platform. It's called The Penuel Show. He's got his own YouTube channel, Penuel the Black Pen. I've got my own YouTube channel. Uh, and maybe you guys might be like, cheese. I mean, guys, so many platforms. It's too much. But that's, that's the thing. We're creators. And we just consistently want to keep creating content every week. Maybe you might just be looking at us judging from how you, li you lead your life. Maybe you're too busy to even record one video a week. But people like us, as much as we're busy, um, we love this. This is passion for us. And yeah. we, we are up for the challenge to record as much content as, as we can. So I'm good. Uh, a lot, lot has been happening in the country, man. Yeah. Well, in the world. In the world, yeah. As well. I, I think let's start with the, with the passing of the Queen. Yes. Those are the biggest news. Uh, I'll, I'll let you hit. So we lost Queen Elizabeth last week. Please. Um, I, I think you're my guest today. Yeah, yeah. I think may her soul rest in peace. Nobody wants their elder, their parent, their grandparent mm. passing on. Death is never a good thing. Sure. But also, let's not shy away from um, silencing 
or um, blocking people who've got their own views mm. about history. Sure. Right? Like they're still coming about Yabayizugulu. What on Jobasim Mabukoko, what is gonna happen with her passing? Her passing is gonna bring in a lot of conversations where we reminisce about the past. Yeah. And some of the things about the past might be great. Positive things will be said about when people were growing up, when Coco was still young, or when Coco <laughs> did this and that. And then some conversations will also come up on some of the things that Coco did yeah. that we didn't like, or that Uncle Banbani didn't like, or yeah. what Coco did to that other street's house when Coco was fine. You remember when Coco burned that house, you know? And for me, I look at it that way. I look at the Queen, and I, I'm very much aware that she has been a very big part of um, colonaz col 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 colonization. Sure. The whole world over and she has presided for many many decades mm. and anything that you don't feel you agree with at some point you come up with ways to try and i don't want to call it dismantle it but but try and find new ways on how you can better the world mm. but i think up until her passing ukoko did not see it fit to um fix some of the uh, atrocities that had been done by the uh you know the the the, the british government to all these other countries all over the world. She reigned for over 70 years. Personally, I want to know, how did you feel when you heard she passed on? I didn't feel anything. Why not? Uh, I didn't feel anything. I don't know. I don't know if there's You're a not reason. angry with her and, and our history? You I, weren't maybe thinking shame, you know, she was such a symbolic figure for the world. Tata Nelson Mandela, I think, had a good relationship with her, etc. Are, are you saying, comparing how I felt when Tata passed on, how hard do I... Hard, no, not compared. I'm oh, just okay. asking how you felt. Because no, 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 I, I didn't I know feel you, anything. No, you're giving us anything. the diplomatic answer now. Of yeah, different no, I did people not feel different... anything. I did not feel anything. Sure. Yeah, I did not feel anything. I know the history. And I know that she's part of, uh, um, you know, a lot of blood that was spilled all over the world. Yes. And all of those types of things. But at the same time, the human being that I am, I know when somebody immediately passes to not immediately um, be very vocal about the negative stuff, but to sort of give give some people some time to grieve. It might be, a, in our days in the world mm. we're living in, might be a day or two or three. But you can't shy away from the conversations that would, people would are Would you suggest that our squatters do something similar? That Sibe Nalengondi, who Shonipa, the deceased, give it a, a period and then from there, then maybe we can go in and be like, I go to Koko, I go to But just, Trump has a city something like, Aslin does Angwajwe. Then we can open up. Would you suggest something like that as a, as a teachable thing? Something like in Kronipa Band, would you say our squatters should consider something like that? I can't tell people what to do yes. and how to feel. Sure. You know, because my own dad, my own biological father, sure. it's sad that when he passed on, I didn't feel sad. Mm. Maybe it's because we were not close and I didn't know him that well. Yeah. And I was brought up by my stepfather. But I'll always love my stepfather. May his soul rest in peace as well. He's passed on. But my, my real biological dad also, I've got love for him. Even when he passed on, even when... Before he even passed on, I was never those guys who was angry with him. Because he left me when I was young. I hate him. No. Sure. I loved him all the way till his grave. But when I had heard that he had passed on, I felt bad for not feeling sad. I didn't feel sad. Jeez. So, you know, history says everything. Sure. So, imagine if I didn't feel sad feel, feel sad i felt bad for not feeling sad about my own, own biological, biological father. father passing on so i mean i can't answer you you know did you read the eff statement uh, i heard about it in the news you didn't read it i didn't read it no what did it say so the eff statement was basically saying that um, they acknowledge uh, and note that queen elizabeth has passed on but from their side they're not going to be mourning because of all the atrocities that had happened historically and the millions of lives that had been lost so to them, it was like, uh, for us, it's a time to reflect on, on the history and the fact that there have never been reparations. Things have not been sorted out. We're still living in the atrocity of the consequence of colonization. So they acknowledge and they note it. But to them, it's like, ay, Baba, in Kalisa. You can go ask other people in Kalisa. How would you feel about reading something like that, especially from a political party that wants to run South Africa in the future? I mean, you can understand where they're coming from. It's not only them. Sure. Black people all over the world, uh, it, you know, it reminded, it, it reminded a lot of black people of their scars. Yeah. It reminded us of our scars. 
because her passing does not make me think about her passing. Her passing reminds me of my own great grandparents sure. who lived under that system, sure. who have passed on. And even our current people right now who are living in these atroci atrocities and all these different social ills that we're experiencing in our communities mm. and in just this dislocated African continent. And, you know, it's people like her to blame. But what I was saying earlier is that I might not be the person to immediately pass on blame when it happens. Mm. I might just feel a little bit like, and it's not only just the queen. Anyone. On social media, I'm not quick to, you know, I always just, you know, just give the family a chance to, you know. Sure. And then I also understand my other people who come out guns blazing on that day. Sure. And I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I totally understand. I've got more questions about the passing of the Queen, but I think we'll end up speaking about it forever. Is there anything else you want to raise from your weekend, what's been happening in South Africa? I think I want to hear your views. On the Queen? Yeah. Should we shut down other conversations? <laughs> no, we'll continue with What's them. been happening in the country? We'll go on to the country. Nyasaba. <laughs> now when we start speaking, it's flames. No, it's fine. Let's go on. Three, five minutes? No, let's, let's speak about the Queen. We'll, we'll speak about other topics okay. on another platform. Um... I was indifferent about Queen Elizabeth. Um, I love the fact that this is going to be a period of education for a lot of people that don't know history, uh, that were not sure, that didn't know a protocol, who's going to be the next king, what is a, a duke, what is a prince, uh, why is he King Charles III, where is number two, where is number one. Um, the fact that uh, the queen didn't have a surname. She was known as Queen Elizabeth of Windsor, but Windsor is where she comes from. Uh, basically, um, and it's something that I've raised before on platforms. And it was funny, I heard Julius Malima raising it as well when he was speaking about the passing of the Queen, that she didn't even have a surname, but you know, we were forced to have surnames under this Commonwealth British colony of sorts. So I think it's been a very educational. I hope it's going to be more educational. I think we need to have conversations around our state presidents, Nelson Mandela, Thabo Mbegi, Jacob Zuma, Cyril Ramaphosa, I'm not sure if Khalima ever met her, Khalima Mutlante. What it meant for our state presidents to almost go there and pay homage to a queen who ruled for 70 years and part of the atrocities that we live in today, does it mean that they were puppets of the British monarch? Or were they just doing their duties diplomatically, but they may have felt some type of way? Why was the King Zuelitin, why did he have a good relationship with, with the queen, uh, as an example? So I was indifferent because I, I sit on both sides. I understand the pain of the colonized, the, the people that were enslaved, that lost their cultures, their languages, their identity, almost their souls and their spirits. But on the other side, I understand the world we live in. I believe that human beings are animals, to be honest. And I believe it's about conquest. Who conquers who? We speak today about land that was stolen. When something is stolen, obviously it's taken without your consent but then you are meant to be able to and report that this was stolen, we, we want it back. In a situation where we fight, Floyd Mayweather versus whoever, and I beat you. Ah, but he was bigger than me. But <laughs> I beat you. And in this country we fought, and people say, but they had superior weapons. And my question is, why did you not have superior weapons? Yeah, but they had in none. Why did you not have that? And at any given time, no one, no one decides, it's time for war, let's go. It's time for war, let's stop. Ingavua no minin. Abandabam nyama on this continent, banga decide no minin. Guys, we're putting together an army. We're going to fight and get our things back. But that hasn't happened. Instead, abandabam nyama batila ngokala endlessly. Which they don't like hearing when I say it on social media. But this is the world we live in. We see it for Otaki with taxi routes that people fight over and kill each other for. We see it with Amatenda. We see it with political titles. Umuntu is getting killed for a councillor position or Funubai municipal manager, whatever the case. So we understand the power of competing for a position. But now when we lose, when we got dominated by a small British army, says Yakali, it's unfair. What, what? So I understand why Brits look at Queen Elizabeth with, with bright eyes. This is someone who ignited the world and showed us that the Brits are strong. Amapun, we have a similar mindset like South Africa. They're like, but we, we, we conquered the blacks and we had the national party and we even took their land in front of them. To this day, but they still come ask me for Hispan. 
That's why I have this superiority complex. That's why I'm going to Hey, what's okay? What is your norm? Spusiso. What's okay? I've got this superiority complex because I feel like I've conquered your people. And until I ought Daki, understand that that's the mindset you need to, when you speak about being a king and a god and a pharaoh as Udaki, you need to have that superior mind. I think we see it in some of the Nigerians today. Oh, Penapoy, I'm a charge of $500,000 for a gig. Those are the guys who are like, this is what I deserve. I'm an international superstar. Ah, but it's too much. It's too much for you because you have an inferior mind. You're happy with peanuts. You're like, no, but in Kambi 2000, it's because you're used to crumbs. I'm used to a godly way of living. I deserve this and more. I should be charging $1 million like this kid. So I understand both sides because I think I have an empathic thought to victors and the losers. But I think because I'm black, <laughs> of <the> course. <laughs> they're the losers of conquest, unfortunately. You know? When Ushaga decided to consolidate the Zulu kingdom, there were tribes that lost. We don't speak about them now. We don't call Ushaga a colonizer. We speak of him as a, as, a, as a warrior. If the Zulu kingdom spread throughout Southern Africa, went up north, we'd be calling it the kingdom of Zulu. And everyone would look upon, do you remember Ushaga and his powerful armies that built the empire of Zulu? To this day, when you look at other languages, it's the influence of Zulu. That's what the Brits see in Queen Elizabeth and in what they've, they've done. To the people that are unhappy, of course, realize we lost, we were angry. But my question is, and then what? I want back to Abang Amanju, I'll say Shonile. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Ah, uh, what now? Is King Charles saying anything? Has he said sorry? There are people that love Princess Diana. She was also a beneficiary of the same system. She wasn't saying, no, I refuse. I will not accept this. I, she was enjoying it. She was being convoyed everywhere, escorted. She had servants. William and Harry, people love William and Harry. Same beneficiaries, same as Ukokwa. How are they different? So you pick and choose who you like and who you don't like, based on what? Ukoko did her job, of course. Now, yeah, she found herself in a position where, let's say, for example, I, I found out, now this is South African news, I found out that Tunkosa Zanajamini Zuma is going to be contesting for president again, even though she lost against Cyril last time. Is that a fact? Yes, this is a fact. Okay. Nkosa Zanajamini Zuma uh, becomes president of the ANC, as an example. After becoming president, people complain, but the ANC is corrupt. Look at the potholes. Ah, but I'm a Kaida. Look at Ama Tendas. And she serves. By the way, she served as head of the African Union. After that, what happens if she passes on, as an example? Do we say, ah, but she, she oversaw an ANC that was corrupt, and that was, therefore, I, her legacy is tainted? Or will she say, but guys, I was within a system that naming I told, like what your mama, this is how protocol is observed. So, I mean, I, I was indifferent with the passing, but I always enjoy the education, and it allows people like us, we don't do stand up comedy. We're not currently doing hip hop, but it gives us content to discuss, uh, entertain where we can. Uh, as we had at some point, Bobby Mbiza was scripts. After Port Elizabeth changed to Kabeh, uh, so we get a chance to entertain and we get a chance to educate others and ourselves. And I've always said when, when global news and South African news happens, always bring it home. What is your family doing? Is your family a colonizer family? Are you oppressing families in your community? Have you given back? If your father, your grandfather has done something wrong, have you gone out to say, I'm sorry, we were wrong? Have you paid reparations to maybe a child? You might be a father who was not there for your child. Have you paid reparations to your child for not being there? Have you said sorry to the mother of your child for whatever you did? So always bring it home, maybe naming Queen Elizabeth in, in, in other people's lives. And if I feel she was wrong, have I done the right thing? Or maybe I think Minangi right. Then maybe there's a chance Queen Elizabeth and her armies and all those people were right. And the only reason you're complaining is because you're a loser. There's people who work in the newsroom, whether on television, whether on radio or newspapers and journalists. And one of the things they get taught, they get taught in journalism school is to always, when you look at a story, find a different angle. Because the whole world, everybody will be reporting on that story. Yeah. What will make you, what will make you different sure. from anybody else that's, um, you know, uh, dropping this content? So with news like this, you also dissect it in different ways. And another angle, as you're saying, I like what you're saying, personalize it, is you personalize it and you look at it and like, wow, 
very soon I'll be like her. Mm. I'll be passing on. Mm. What am I going to leave behind? We can see what she's left behind. Apart from the bad things, even though you and I don't like them that were done to our great grandparents, yeah. our forefathers, our ancestors, but she's kept a legacy of a system that continues. Yes. I think that's partly why a lot of black people are pissed off. Yes, she's passing on, but even a joy of those people who are hot, I don't want to call them heartless, but people who feel, maybe who feel joy, mm. to show Neil. still, sure. it doesn't change anything. Because I don't think she's changed the system. I don't think she changed much before she left. She continues to leave that system for her, for her family to inherit. And who is, who is and, responsible for that system? And, and her children her grand, and her, her grandchildren. So mm. I'll answer you just now. When sure. I personalize it, I look at her and I say, what is it that I'm building, Mina, that I leave, I leave systems to mm. when I've passed on, that those systems look after my kids, even the great grandkids, while even though, even before they're born. Because I look at it like now as this entrepreneurship drive is, is, is loud and the narrative is getting louder and louder, Yes, there's going to be some of us. There's, there's, a, lots of, there's a lot of us that are hustling. Mm. Some of us side hustles while we're doing our corporate thing. Some of us are building brands while we're working. Some of us are tendering. Some of us will be very wealthy. Sure. We're going to be extremely wealthy. Sure. What are we going to do with that wealth? It's just that wealth that is going to be built to be also spent back to the Europeans. Mm. Travel Europe, just like every, a lot of black people who've always been rich over the years. Travel to Europe, wear European brands, own real estate overseas. And just never be seen by African brothers and sisters. Only be seen on e on television or on press conferences or on magazines or on Instagram. Yeah. What are you going to do with that wealth? So I think a situation like that also makes you look at a family legacy that you're currently building. To say, while I'm building it, anything can happen. I must, I, I must be right with putting together things like I'm a will. I must be right with putting together things like in a will, when you speak to that lawyer or the legal person that assists you to draw, to draw it up, even if it's a trust, you must draw it up with a long-term plan. I yeah. remember when Michael Jackson passed, or I don't know if it was Whitney Houston, the inheritance at some point, some of, the, some of his kids were not eligible for it up until a certain age. Sure. And even that age, they don't get everything. They get certain parts of it up until another age. Sure. Even that, they don't get everything up until maybe they get married. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. that yeah. It's a system that has been put together by this person while he was still alive to make sure that he knows by this age, by this age, sure. by this age, definitely, I'm sure, then you can give them. So when you're doing that, you know what you are passing it on because then when you give them the, the, the other portions, maybe when they're 40 or when they're late 30s, mm. then you know they are mature or they lived life. They've been divorced or you know what I mean? So they are at a level where they can make better decisions even for the future. Yeah. Or you can even say, even at that age, they don't get even everything. Yeah. Maybe you pass on everything else to their kids. To their grandkids. Now, nah, but their grandkids. kids, when they get, they only get maybe from this age. Sure. Even at this age, maybe up until 18, maybe 25, sure. maybe 30, or maybe when they get married, or maybe 40. Do you know what I mean? There's different things that you put in there, in that agreement, when you speak to that legal person. So... When I watch her death, I think of things like that. That's mm. umkulu saying Shona, umkulu umkulu ang ang place glom sabang pile. Na saying zoshona, zoshona gu guti saying saying ibildi le na ilega si erite. Enga kono guti zula le tu izugula ne zai zugula ne zam. Then in that way, I guess that's what we would call uh, breaking the cycle, and breaking what you know we've been calling the generational curse amongst black people, where we just die and we leave debt behind, or we just die and leave just one house and a car. Mm. So as I'm saying, as we keep on building these businesses, a lot of us are going to be wealthy. Or, or let me say, some of us are going to be very wealthy. So let's start thinking around how do we systematically distribute that wealth, not only, but to, not only to our families, but also to our communities. Mm. Are we always just going to be reliant to the government or are we all just going to choose our causes that we stand for and create some systematic things that your money, even in your passing, continues to do good for your own immediate community, wherever you were brought up or wherever you're from. You spoke about the systems that she left behind that still oppress us and why people are angry that the systems are still there. My question to you is, in a South African context, who is responsible to change those systems? You remember the last time we spoke about an article of um, 
put him well, him back. Yes. When he spoke about a South Africa being still a British colony. Yes. And the NC just being running the affairs on behalf of the Queen. Yeah. So how do you change something that belongs to the Queen still? So you believe that our politicians don't have the power to change that system? I think with what I've observed over the years, I don't think they do have the power. Because if, if they had the power, I would like to believe they probably would have changed a lot. Is it not from a, a greed perspective? As I'm listening to you speaking about building systems for your kids so that they benefit, and it almost sounds like you want to be on the winner's side. Like you wouldn't mind if you were part of Queen Elizabeth's legacy. And we've heard arguments of what Dark, which most black people, most, are not trying to liberate black people as a whole. They're just trying to remove themselves from that section and, and find their own space in an already winning system. Because I worry that we're gonna win, we're gonna create worlds and stuff for our kids, but there are always going to be people that are gonna feel like we're taking from them, regardless. So do you not feel that in what we're building, speaking about wealth, speaking about passive income, speaking about business systems, intellectual property, royalties, uh, et cetera, is that not just copy and paste of what they already have there and it's also going to carry on oppressing other people except we'll be the beneficiaries so it will be fine? I don't believe in any oppression and um, I don't believe in, you know, what... I don't know what the Queen believed in or what she lived for, but her actions mm. say, you go to, uh, say otherwise, you know, exactly what the EFF was putting on, on, their, on their letter yeah. of, of what the Queen represented. That's why it Nami even on a year of her death immediate thoughts that come to my mind is not even her, it's not even about her. Sure. It's just about all the millions of black people that have just been killed over the years and just the systems that we're living under and just to think, when I think of a name, that's all that just comes to mind, right? Mm. But anyway, coming back is the systems, I mean, is not only for the family, even for your community. Sure. Like, I want to start now, and like, not even in, in future. Like, now, over the next couple of years, I want to start building things in my community that I think will be will be will live on for long and will Im impact lives from an early age not mm. only just things like early i think the other day i was on your podcast we spoke about the the uh, my, my passion for young people and studying them from an early age early childhood development centers but not with the normal not the normal ones that we know sure. those ones that also teach like coding things like entrepreneurship all of those different things from an early age mm. right because we're complaining about the educational system yeah so come up with an educational system that I think would be relevant for kids from a young age that teach them to be independent from, a, from, 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 from an early age. Mm -hmm. And to also teach these kids about, uh, about AI, about uh, you know, online and, and entrepreneurship commerce, but online, sure. because that's their future. That's how they'll be living. They need to be taught about how you know, they can adapt to their future. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, and, and, and build other things. Yeah, in, in Safungu's build, and my dream is, is very, very big. But yeah, the systems are not only just to benefit my immediate family, but my immediate community. Mm. But still, politically, we have to keep on being loud. Um, and we have to keep on amplifying the voices that are against the current um, system, the white supremacist system. I'm amongst the people that say it has to be dismantled. And the Queen lived up until she passed on now in 2022, August, mm. without them being dismantled. Do you think there was anything wrong with the British Empire outside of slavery and war? If they had no slaves, if there were no fights, but they went around colonizing the world, maybe in an intelligent way, uh, through music, through religion, through maybe cool movies, for example, uh, reality shows where we're watching Keeping Up with the, the royal family, as an example. Do you think there would be anything wrong with that? Because I listen to you speak about your community. If your community becomes successful the, the way you want, chances are it will want to expand beyond and then move to other territories. So outside of slavery and war, and let's call it the looting of resources, do you think there was anything wrong with the British Empire? And do you think we should be striving for something similar? I think there's everything wrong with the people that are running the world. Sure. I think if the people that, were, that are running the world were very caring, for humanity and they were uh, inspired by love and they were really inspired by God or godly ways of doing things. I don't think we'd have such a world. Mm. We've got a world right now, yes, we're living in this capitalistic society and the things, these systems that have been built globally and the world over, a lot of them, they were, they were built unnecessarily so. 
things like the frequency of music just being changed so that we don't have to listen or receive or absorb or consume music on a proper frequency. Things like languages, things like our history being destroyed, things like some countries complaining of their water being polluted with either fluoride or things like that. Things like people's pineal glands being under attack so they don't get to wake up and be wise. Things like an educational system that doesn't provide people to understand financial literacy, to understand um, health, to understand plants, medicine and seeds organically. Things like the pharmaceutical company. So everything, it's not just the conquering of the people in Umtavakpel. It led on to everything else that we're living under right now that many other people are actually not even aware of. Mm. Uguti, you know, the world that we're living in, we're actually consistently under attack. Even the foods that we're now buying, there's micro nanoparticles that are in there that people don't know about, for instance. People don't even know the agenda of the people that are running the world if it's good for, for, for our future or it's not good for our future. If it was good for our future, why is it that right now in 2022, we are living in an era where we are so um, censored? The other time, people couldn't even say anything about their op opposing of vaccines, for instance. Even on social media, alternative even media. Even on social media. Mm -hmm. Isn't it that they must still be given, they must still be given the chance and an opportunity to express themselves. So why is it that we're trying so hard to silence certain people? You know, and, and I can go on and on and on and on. So the fight is everywhere. The fight is in everything. Uh, the attack against us. Yeah. Against humanity. So, so, so you can't only just say, yeah, if, 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 they, if they'd only... Um, if they only colonized it, they only did this, we, you, no, they did more than that, and they continue to still do so. And um, I can't single out one thing that they did, because everything else has been a ripple effect to all the way to now, to the kind of world that we're living in, where it's so unequal, so many people are living in poverty all over the world. I mean, do you understand the poverty that is in India, hmm. let alone Africa, you know, and just our, for our minerals to just continuously, even still in 2022, continuously be taken. And just the lives that we're living under and just the system is atrocious. The system is demonic. It's evil. And it's sad that the queen unfortunately had to pass on without having at least done something. If maybe we had, we had heard talks, maybe she could send to the and sing him Dala. Maybe when she turned 90, she passed on now at 96. Maybe when she turned 90, maybe just to kind of feel, man, you know, I'm getting old. I sing Zofa, man. Guys, let's have these talks. Let's, you know what I mean? You can see with this thing. The people that won, as you put them, they are not in a position to want to let go yeah. of that uh, wealth that they've accumulated I'd like for so to, many generations. I'd like you to clarify, you spoke about the frequency of music. And to a normal person, you're saying, oh, the amount of music we're getting. But it sounds like that's not what you were speaking about. What, you, what did you mean by they changed the frequency of music? Um, sonically, a human being is, is a being of energy, right? I think with some of the lessons that we've been learning from some great people who've been coming to our other platform, Hustlers Corner. Yeah. And actually, this Vecham Kuka, as it was birthed there on the Hustlers Corner, we've interviewed some incredible people with some amazing information to share. Yeah. And with some of the books that one has read and being a musician myself over the years, you know, um, I've learned that information. You would say, actually, we are not receiving or consuming music at the right frequency. What is frequency? There is a standard frequency that has been set by the powers that be for us to consume music at a frequency at which we are consuming it in. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's, it's not the best frequency we, we should be consuming music at. And I think uh, I wanna also give it to, you know, the audience out there to go do their own research. What do I actually mean when I, when I say that? So go and research further on the right frequency for people to be able to listen to music at sonically. Mm -hmm. And this is all the record companies all over the world. This is all the DSPs, all the platforms all over the world and just how music gets pushed out out there. It's not the right frequency which is supposed to be at. And it affects our which, energy. Which is supposed to be good for people. And it affects our energy levels. I wouldn't say what it affects, but, okay. it's, but it's apparently not good for us. Okay. I've got two more questions. The first one is you speak about all these people that run the world and how they are not good people and they've polluted almost 
every aspect of I, society. I don't know them, so I can't say they're not good people. But what 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 they seem to have done? Yeah, the not, systems, not the good. systems they have built. Yeah, not good systems. Sure. Yeah, I'm asking. Uh, maybe it, it might be good systems, but the way they've been, the way those systems have been done, they don't favor certain races of people. Yeah. Mm. Do you think we'll ever be able to alter those systems, or influence the people that are custodians of those systems? using love, peace, Ubuntu, versus uses the, using the methods that have been used in the past since we're speaking about the British Empire of violence? That's an extremely, extremely good question, Peño. Mm. I think that's how black people are. Now I'm talking about our race. Yeah. Generally, I think our race of people, black people, are generally good people. I think that they are loving people. I think they are calm people. I think they are people of nature. I think they are good, loving people. Mm. And I don't only talk about black people. There's good, loving people all over the world, all races. I think it's just a few <coughs> excuse me, minority of people or groups of people, or let me say a few families. And I don't think those families are over 100 mm. that are continuing to keep this system alive. So when you say love and being kind and being, do I still believe that's the future? Other people would argue and say, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you can't give out the other cheek. At some point, you have to stand up and into a tweet So, who am I to say that's the correct way? I also don't know the future because these systems, as you can see, the people that have put them together, they don't seem to be willing mm -hmm. to dismantle them. So, I mean, obviously, I'll forever promote love, I'll forever promote peace, I'll forever promote kindness. But then again, you don't know for how many other hundreds of years, will they maybe one day wake up and decide, well, you know what, let's dismantle these systems, man. Let's treat all human beings as equal. Let there be one race all over the world. Let the, let their norm, let the, um, and now I'm living in a fantasy world. <laughs> but, utopia that we're all striving for. Yeah, that's what we, we, we're all striving for. And a lot of us are promoting love. We are preaching peace. We are preaching, but it doesn't look like the people who used, um, you know, violence to accumulate all these things for the longest of time, even still till today, doesn't look like they're going to change in any way. We started this conversation with you saying you didn't feel anything with the passing of uh, Queen Elizabeth II. And then we had a, a bit of an emotional conversation about the legacies of her reign, the legacies of the British army and what they've done and the colonization and how some of them, whether it's them or they've influenced other people to influence or pull systems that have been oppressive to people and we're still living in them today and the consequences. I'm gonna ask you in closing, do you still feel the same way and you feel indifferent about the passing of Queen Elizabeth? Um, I, I, I think of the millions of black people that have passed on, you know, her death, that's what it reminds me. So I don't, I don't feel anything. Uh, I just feel really sad and my, my heart pains me when I look at the poverty that black people are under. My heart pains me when I think of um, my grandparents, when I think of my community where I grew up. My heart pains me to think that actually there can be people who can decide and change that, but they don't. So I can't be asked to feel any other how, just like as I've said earlier, that even when my own biological father who gave birth to me, I felt bad that I, I didn't feel sad. Partly I know it's because I, I, you know, I, had a, I didn't have a relationship with him. I didn't know him. So I, I, I could understand as a young man not feeling that sad or crying. But then over the years, many years later after he had passed on, I understand the significance of a parent and how much I miss my father. Mm. And this is my father. This is my own biological father. So I can't answer you about the queen when I only think about black people when I hear of the queen's name. Thank you. Before we go. I'll ask you the last, the last question sure. before we wrap this one up. Um, I want to know why did you and, and, and you for I think two episodes on the Hustlers <laughs> Corner, you didn't answer this question. And I think even at your podcast when you invited me, you didn't answer this question. Yes. Why do you say, uh, you know, you've done all you could and do so much for our people, black people, but you felt at some point to go to not anymore. So Ngalile. May I ask a favor mm. to you? May we please do an hour, hour and a half of this conversation because it is very emotive and, and triggering for me. Uh, it won't be in five minutes that I explain why I have, in inverted commas, abandoned the black struggle. It's a very deep personal conversation for me. Uh, it's a very painful conversation for me. 
And it's one where when we sit there, depending on, on how I feel on the day, there's a chance that I'm, 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 I'm going to curse very deeply and I'm going to offend a lot of people. So I want to be in the right frame of mind okay. because it's a very emotional topic for me and I want to articulate myself so that our squatters, our hustlers hear me very, very well. Okay. No taken. Thank you very much to the virtual squatters. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe on our channel. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to click on the notification bell. And don't forget to visit our Khuratman channel, The Hustler's Corner. We'll see you guys soon from myself and DJ Spoo. We out. Remember, guys, on this channel, we've got two episodes that drop now, Mondays and Thursdays. We've got another episode dropping on Thursday. That's all I was just saying to Penuel. I love the episode with Sismandisa last week. Thank you. Beautiful education. We're out. Peace.